So this is my 15 inch M4 Air that I purchased almost six months ago and I've been using it for like everything. My notes, university, business things and of course editing videos. And it's been great except as usual. There are a few things that could be improved, a few things that make my experience an absolute nightmare and a few things you need to know about before you think about buying this or if you already have this, a few settings you need to change to make sure you're getting the most out of your M4 Air. That's what we're going to get into today. Before we start, can we get the Wembin Yamba angle please? All right, everything looks good. The color sucks, okay? Oh my god. We're gonna get into like all the fun things and all the things this is absolutely amazing at. Don't get me wrong, I love this laptop. But every single YouTuber warned me about this aluminum, this like dark color. The laptop also comes in four finishes. The traditional silver, the goldish starlight colorway, midnight. Still a bitch of smudge prone in midnight to be honest. Remember when Kakashi told Kuro and I that Itachi was a top G? It isn't my desire to kill you and not to try some BS and then she went and tried that sleight of hand shit. Like, that's what I feel like when I bought this Mac and I was like, this is a beautiful color, right? I didn't like any of the other silvers, the blue silver, chrome silver, yellow, I don't care, it's all silver. And then I realized how easy it is to smudge the aluminum. This smudges so easily, even though my hands are, like, I don't have oily hands, okay? So my hands are dry, like hand sanitizer all the time and keep them super dry. It still smudges. So guys, and I'm not just talking about the outside, like you can kind of see the smudges right now as well. Smudges everywhere up here. And also on these like rests all over, even the keyboard, there's smudging. It's so smudgy. And if the smudging gets to you, you're not gonna wanna go over this one, guys. Go with the silvers, one of the silvers. I don't, just, just avoid this color, okay? So I just wanna start with that. Before we dive in, because we haven't dived in yet, don't, we haven't even got into half the things we gotta get to. I've added some kit over the past six months. First of all, the most important thing you can add to your Mac is a screen protector. And this is not legally binding. This is not financial advice. This is not legal advice. I have myself a matte screen protector on my screen, okay? So this screen, this beautiful display has a matte screen protector. And I think it's one of the most important upgrades you can do to your Mac. Now I've added this Mac screen protector below in the description. I'm not sponsored by them. But the reason I added this matte one is number one, this display is super glary. All Macs have a very, you know, shiny display. And so it doesn't matter where you are. Like I can be in home and it's like all the lights on the roof that are behind me are reflecting on the display and it gets in the way. If you're outdoors, if you're like in a cafe or a university classroom, again, you have lights on the ceiling. Those are reflecting on the display and it just gets in the way of so many, even if you're writing down notes, if you're editing videos, like in a cafe or something like that outdoors, yeah, it's gonna be an, an issue when you're trying to edit something and you have massive glare from windows on the screen. So all I'm saying is get yourself a screen protector that's matte finished and and get rid of that whole problem. So I never have glare issues on my display. It does make the display a little bit dimmer, but the display already gets so bright that I don't really care. Now, a lot of people have issues with screen protectors on Mac. They say, like I had an Apple tech in my comments tell me that having a screen protector on your display is actually very bad for the hinge. This screen protector does not even raise past the display itself. So the, the hinge is unaffected. And over the past six months, no issues with the hinge. It fully closes, so there's no space. So it's a very thin screen protector that disperses light to keep things matte. And second, there are some people that say it'll leave behind an adhesive on the screen. I haven't taken this screen protector off, so I don't know if there's any adhesive that's gonna be stuck, but I've never had an issue with adhesive being stuck on the screen after removing a screen protector. So I don't think that's going to be an issue this time either. Other than that, I also have added a USB dock. I think it's, you need a USB dock for this. Let me, let me, wait. Wait, 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 don't go. Don't go anywhere. This is my USB dock, ladies and gentlemen. It's a unnaturally long cable, but look, like <laughs> everything I could need. One USB-C and an HDMI. And of course, I it takes one USB-C so I can plug it into like any of the two that are available. And all of a sudden, I'm getting <laughs> work done. The battery is absolutely stellar. It's mind boggling good, okay? This battery is so good. I once went to school and I checked, like as soon as I got in, I sat down, I opened this laptop, 5% battery. I started a day with 5% battery and it lasted me like four hours of classes. 
5%. I was just taking notes. The battery is insanely good on this Mac. Now, I know it doesn't have a fan. We're going to talk about the fanless design and you know what, what you get with that. But the battery, as far as I'm concerned, is absolutely amazing. Let, let's go ahead and do a daily recap. Day in the life of the M4 MacBook Air real quick. To talk a little bit more about the fanless design, because like I said, I use this most of the time in school. So in school, you know, someone next to me who has like, I don't know, Microsoft Surface Book, they've got like an entire engine running. It sounds like a damn airplane on that side. This is quiet. It just feels premium just by how quiet it is all the time. And that's something that's grown on me. I kind of love how quiet that is. But obviously that impacts your productivity because you might be thinking without a fan, you can't cool down your laptop. And well, that could be an issue. Two things to consider. First of all, as far as school productivity is concerned, you're writing notes, you're creating presentations, you're doing research, you're writing papers, Google Chrome tabs, you can have 50 running, that's perfectly fine. That won't even push the M4 chip at all. Like you can do all of your school stuff without having any issues when it comes to the productivity. Now, for me specifically, I'm in STEM, so I'm doing like science research and stuff like that. So for me, most of my like maximum school productivity comes when it comes to research. And I have like 50 research articles open at once that I'm like running through and like doing citations and stuff. So that for me, you know, is flawless. It's like butter, smooth. <laughs> Yeah, boy. No problem whatsoever. Also, I'm doing presentations, so I'm using Google Sheets a lot and I'm collaborating with a lot of other students. All of that, not a single issue ever when it comes to heating up. Like this does not heat up when it comes to any kind of school productivity. So if you're using it for that, you're gonna be fine. Don't even worry about it. When it comes to editing videos, and I'm editing like 4K videos from my cameras on this and I'm like transferring and rendering 4K videos and I'm doing that often in the background. So I will have those videos rendering in the background while I'm working on something else. That's when you start to push the processor a little bit and that's when the fanless design might be holding you back just a little bit because the first video that I might be rendering renders really fast. But what ends up happening is as the chip starts to heat up, that rendering time is gonna get longer and longer. And so your productivity is gonna be pushed back as the chip heats up. One workaround, get yourself a fan. Literally, there are fan docks now on Amazon that you can put your laptop on top and it'll cool down the chip. And that plays significant roles, okay? So you might be thinking like, what's that gonna do? What could that possibly do for me? Don't sleep on those fan dogs, okay? Those things are insane, especially for something like this. If it can cool the chip even a little bit, this chip goes insane. I love the M4 chip. I even love its setbacks because it's like, oh, it's heating up. Bring out the dog. Boom. Boom. That's all I want to say about the, the heat and, and a little bit more about the productivity because it handles it. Now let's talk a little bit more about the size because it's a massive display. It's the first time I'm using a 15 inch laptop and I specifically went for 15 inches because I wanted to edit videos on this and I wanted to see more parts of the timeline. It makes it easier to edit when you have a bigger display. Also, it makes it easier to edit photos. It makes it easier to write things, to do Chrome research and multitask. Everything is made easier with a bigger display. So I do recommend people go with a bigger one, but it makes the whole thing bigger. Like the whole laptop is bigger, obviously. So it doesn't fit in most like little backpacks. Like if you have a little Hello Kitty backpack, it's not probably not gonna fit in there. You proper, you need a proper sized backpack to put this in. It's not going to be the most portable MacBook Air. It's not like the previous, you know, super razor thin ones. But at the same time, it is still very thin. It's very, it's not very heavy whatsoever. It doesn't add a lot of weight to it. If you're thinking about like the iPad Pro, the 13 inch iPad Pro with the magic keyboard might be like 75% of this weight. Okay, so I'm, I'm telling you, it's not very heavy. It's still very thin. It just has a large form factor, a large footprint. So you gotta kind of factor that in when you're thinking about where you're gonna be using this. This might not be the easiest thing to use on an airplane or on a train that doesn't have a proper like table or even in some university classes that don't have proper tables and have the like a fold out stuff that we have in our university is broke. Okay, we're, we're super broke. And of course, the next topic is build quality. Oh my God. Okay, well, obviously there's no shell. I didn't put any shell on this at all. I didn't put any cover over the keyboard. So this is like exactly the way it's been the whole time and six months 
using this across every different kind of like uh, manosphere it's been absolutely fine there's been no damage to the aluminum although it could get damaged like this is just a regular mac aluminum so it's not like indestructible it's just that i've been generally more you know careful with it well i put it in my backpack but i don't throw it around you know be mindful of where you're putting it obviously things happen if it does slip yeah it's gonna dent. more importantly something super important guys you see these these little pegs Oh my god, you know how many times I have lost these on my other Macs? Like, these things you just slide around and they come off. But now, there's something to note. This is not very sticky. If you do, like, move your tablet or your MacBook around, they're not going to, like, slide off. Which is an issue I've had with all of my previous Macs. Those feet always are, like, lost. After, like, six months to a year, I have, like, one or two feet missing. Okay, so the feet on this one, they're all there. But you see how scratched, guys. Do you see how scratched this one is? But, like, the edges are all beat up all on the side. This is an older MacBook Air. I'm just talking about, like, the quality of the feet. Stellar. And finally, let's talk about gaming. Don't game on your MacBook Air. If you are going to game, you're going to need the dock. You're going to need that fan dock that I'm talking about because this definitely will, you know, start heating up if you're gaming for longer periods of time, which you might be because it's a lot of fun. It's a massive screen that looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, the screen isn't going to be, you know, the, you know, those AMOLED displays that you get on other devices. For productivity tabs and for things like research and getting things done, you don't need 120 hertz you don't need all of that you 60 hertz plenty for getting those productivity things done so again those kinds of issues over the past like six months have never really hit me all that hard for the for as far as my daily usage and so i'm not going to complain about them keyboard is incredibly good it's much better than than the previous 2021 so uh, yeah i love this new keyboard the trackpad with the 15 inch insanely sized like it's huge overall Everything about this Mac, as far as the build and the design language, I don't have any issues with whatsoever. Obviously, the glare screen, the, the shiny display was an issue. I fixed that with the matte screen protector. Everything is so much more cleaner now. The only issue, which is why it's such an issue to me, is the smudges. This color smudges so much, that that's what makes this look the dirtiest. Everything's so perfectly pristine and clean, except for how many smudges or how easy it is to smudge. Even, even like the the fingerprint scanner flawless perfectly fast next i'm going to be responding to your guys's comments from my last video could it handle some 4k video editing absolutely no problem if you're doing like 4k shorts and things like that easy money okay if you're doing like an hour long 4k video all right yeah you can do that without the fan more than an hour 4k video edited like raw 4k video you're gonna want to get that fan dog to keep the for cool but it absolutely can handle that with the fan dog so don't worry about that answer to your question absolutely yes next if i'm doing content creation or shorts will the macbook air 20, 256 gig gig be okay i think absolutely now if you're doing content creation i definitely recommend getting an external hard drive i have like I have like 10 of them okay so i keep it because you want to keep those content creation files separate so i do have either get yourself an external hard drive or uh, upload them to the cloud so that you can access them on different devices but yeah content creation absolutely can handle 4k dude how the frick does 60 hertz doesn't matter it's a huge difference stop watching this after the sentence all right i don't give a damn bro 60 hertz doesn't matter that much if you're doing what i talked about if you're editing videos if you're editing photos if you're doing any kind of productivity if you're coding if you're doing research if you're creating presentations if you're collaborating with people on presentations doesn't matter how many hertz there are because none of it's not about performance it's all about productivity and handling that workload if you're playing those high fps games like if you're playing fortnite if you're doing fortnite it might be an issue maybe but if you're not doing that if you're doing workloads that are more productivity based 60 hertz is not a factor at all after you use oled mobile phones and oled tablets oled tvs these screens look washed out blurry and slow when you crank the brightness the macbook you will be shocked how dim these screens are compared to phones tvs okay yeah it's not a tv bro it's a it's a macbook you're not watching this from like 
eight feet away, you're up right close to it. Like you don't need this to get insanely bright. The only time where brightness actually factors in is when you're outdoors. You're still close to the display, but when you're outdoors, you want it to get brighter so that you can see whatever you're editing. And I would know because when I'm editing videos, I'm often working on the color grading. And so color grading does require you to be able to see the display and see exactly what the colors look like in relation with everything else. And so I'm telling you that this gets plenty bright, bro. It gets plenty bright. Now I have studio lights on right now and you can still see this clearly and without any glare from any of the studio lights. Okay, it's fine. Bad idea to put that screen protector on. It damages the hinge and Apple doesn't recommend it on its website. That's possible. Apple doesn't recommend a lot of things. Frick that. I definitely need a screen protector on this, especially the matte one because of the glare. That glare would be a serious problem because I'm using this outdoors. I'm using this in a lot of different settings and without this screen protector that glare is going to annoy the crap out of you in stem in science there's a lot of reading there's a lot of writing and if that experience isn't great then it's like what's the point of paying all this premium money for a premium product so i always get the mask screen protectors the the paper like screen protectors i think it adds a lot of character to the product especially to to even a mac but it makes using it a lot easier as well uh, and i've got one link down in the description in case you're interested K-drama made me sad. Right now I'm watching Walking on Thin Ice. That's the only one I'm watching right now. I it's been a it's been a bad year, guys. It's just been a pretty a trash year when it comes for for K-drama for the fans. Okay, for the fans, it's been pretty bad. I don't know what what did I watch before this? Right now I'm wa watching Walking on Thin Ice. Before this I watched uh, Family by Choice. I don't know if that came out this year. That was pretty good. That was a pretty good one. Yeah. If you want to know more, I'll, I'll comment down below. <laughs> comment down below what you're watching and I'll give you my entire list. But I think that's it. So that's it for this video. As far as talking about the 4 MacBook Air 15 inch, overall, absolutely stellar. Like I talked about the charger, talked about the battery. You can use the included uh, charger. It charges really fast and the charge again just lasts. It just lasts you. Okay. So it's just, it's one of my favorite devices. I I have a lot of pride in owning this and being able to use it in class and things like that because it is so, so capable. Uh, even after six months of usage, I've never had to reach a limit as to where it just wouldn't work anymore. So especially with me, because I'm not editing three, four hours of 4K video, but I did test. My brother has a Legion, a Lenovo Legion that has a fan, right? That has like a built in fan. And even then he had to buy that fan dock because that thing still heats up insanely. It has an Nvidia like 4080 inside. It's, in, it's an insane laptop, but it heats up like crazy. This is obviously made for gaming, but I used that fan dock on this and it absolutely improved performance even on the low end. So if you just want really fast performance, or if you just want to have it on your uh, desk so whenever you sit at your desk you can just put this on the dock and it'll just chill the the laptop while you use it absolutely go for it so uh, it's a really great workaround to the fanless design um but honestly even without that i think for a lot of people it's going to be perfectly fine for for a lot of people bro there's so much smudging man i hate smudges all right okay until next time take it easy <laughs>